This is Steve Halleck of TikToking.com with another review video here. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, comment if you have any questions or want to say anything, uh, and definitely check out my website. You can also find me on Instagram. I'm at Steve Halleck, S-T-E-V-E-H-A-L-L-O-C-K. Uh, today I have a very, very rare watch from one of my favorite brands. This is the Urwerk 102, and it's actually the first watch that Urwerk made. Um, this particular piece is in stainless steel. Um, so they made the 101 and the 102, and they actually made them uh, pretty much at the same time. The 101 were gold, uh, and so they didn't necessarily have the money to pay for these gold cases, so they were making the 102 uh, concurrently and helping to pay for the 101. And the watch is basically the same. The only difference is the lugs. The 101 doesn't have these uh, sort of middle lug things. And in the front, uh, the strap just sort of goes into the case. Uh, so you can check out pictures of one online. But this, is, this particular one is the 102. And the lug design was actually after the Sputnik, um, which if you uh, Google image Sputnik, you'll see how this sort of relates to the antennas on it and everything. It's one of the hardest watches to photograph or video because it's basically like a mirror. Uh, you can see, here I am. Hi. <laughs> and uh, this is really has all the Urwerk DNA in this one piece. So uh, one really cool thing about this is that they had no production capabilities at this time. So every, this piece is completely handmade. There were no CNC machines or anything like that used in it. And you really have Felix Baumgartner at at his best as a watchmaker in this piece. Um, they're very rare at this point. I'm not sure how many were made, I think around 50, um, but not all of them have, have survived. And um, the it's just really special. You can kind of feel the brand DNA in it. And if you're somebody like me who really loves Urwerk, it's a, it's a special piece because Felix's story um, and Martin is really cool. They're guys who really wanted to do things the right way and they didn't have the money that some people would have and they, they kind of uh, bootstrap their way to the success that they've had now and this watch is, is how they did it. So um, you can see the case is, is sort of a, a UFO bubbly thing. You just have this one uh, crystal here that has all your time uh, on it. So it's not a great watch if you need to know the exact time. Uh, you can get to the point where you can tell pretty well within about five minutes. And there are little markings here, and I'll show you how they work. Uh, but if you need to know the exact minute, this is not the watch for you. So you just have a very small engraving down there that says Urwerk. And back here, it says Urwerk Geneve and has the number on it. Um, again, it's steel. I love the crown on this watch. It's this, um, let me make sure it's in focus here. There we go. It's this cool kind of barrel of a crown and it's also polished and it really goes with the watch nicely. And it's a screw down crown. So there actually is some water resistance here. My camera cannot focus on this watch. It's like too shiny. Um, but let me show you how it works. If you know, Urwerk is, is basically, almost all their watches work on this principle of um, hours going around a minute track. Um, and it was originally based on uh, like a sundial and how a sundial travels across a, in an area. So you have here, uh, right now it's, it's a little before 11.45, which is the correct time, but I will change it for you guys. So you can see it's a screw down crown and we pull it out and let's watch the 11 go down here and it's gonna change to 12 which comes up on this side and then travels across and now one. So you can see it's very much the same principle as used in the 103 and the 110 and the 210 the 105, the 202, uh, and the 201, which I've uh, put both on here before. Uh, it's really uh, the, the basic concept of Urwerk distilled into a, uh, a very, very early piece. 
Um, now again, this is stainless steel. It's only 36 millimeters and it's round. So it has a very vintage vibe to it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw this watch if somebody guessed uh, that it was made in the 70s um, when people were making kind of crazy looking mechanical watches. But let me show it to you on the wrist. Before I do, the buckle's pretty cool. Again, done without CNC machines. It's a custom uh, or work done buckle. And it's very similar to the buckle on the 103, if you guys are familiar with that one. So they had these buckles early on too, with this really long uh, tang right here. So pretty cool, but let me show you on the wrist. Again, it's 36 millimeters. My girlfriend always steals this watch from me. She loves it. Um, it looks really cool on ladies, but it looks cool on men too. It doesn't look that small because the lugs are pretty long. Um, and it's such a bizarre UFO -y type of thing that it, you know, doesn't look like a, a super classic watch anyway. Um, and I think it actually would look kind of weird if it were 44 millimeters or something like that. It would just be too crazy of a UFO. So that's one of the things I really love about this watch that it's, it's got these classic proportions, but it is kind of crazy. And it, that's what really gives it its vintage look. Um, so again, this is the Urwerk 102 in stainless steel. This is the foundation piece from Urwerk and one you're not likely to see very often. I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'm going to do another little bonus video uh, comparing this and the MBNF HM1. Um, so you have both of the foundation pieces of both of uh, probably the coolest brands in the world. So that's it. Thanks.